Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson. Uh, got a wonderful show for you today. I've got my good friend, Mr. Bill Ladd from uh, Springfield, Missouri, and which is a town that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, he's from a city that I hate, <laughs> called Popular Bluff. And uh, we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But uh, welcome to the show, uh, Bill, man. Uh, how are you doing, brother? Corey, I am doing great, brother. I really appreciate you having me on. Been following you on Facebook. You got a lot of exciting stuff going on. So appreciate you making time to carve out and have me on. Well, I always make time for my CPA, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, Not the most enjoyable time, but it's time nonetheless, right? Uh, honestly, every time we have a conversation, I think all we do is laugh and cut up and um, we get to the point. So Absolutely. Uh, that's exactly how you know, the relationship with your CPA should be. If you're just talking to a a bean counter, that's no fun. You want to have someone that has, uh, you know, that can count numbers and then also have a conversation. Yeah. That's a unique gift. <laughs> and to say that you did, and you went down to the CPA route, what happened, brother? You know what? I tell you, I, I kind of question that sometimes. I'm not sure what I was thinking there, but, uh, you know, I'm not your traditional CPA. I'll put it that way. My mind goes a million miles an hour. And so, you know, I enjoy our talks. It's always fun to to catch up with you, uh, even if you are a, uh, a West Plains zizzer, man, that's, uh, yeah. I'm just kind of the bottom of the barrel with this conversation. But uh. <laughs> So for everybody who just watching and listening to this thing, uh, we, we come from, uh, I'm from the Ozarks, uh, so is uh, Mr. Ladd, and you know, we have a, a high school rivalry that's pretty strong, pretty strong, and uh, we, I mean, we both grew up in towns that no one will ever know about, but um but we know about them, and Absolutely. that's all that really matters. And so there's this West Plains Zizzers. Now, before anybody – I already know what you're saying. They're, and Bill will even ask the question. What's the question? You, what exactly is a zizzer? Nobody see? really knows yet. <laughs> the definition of a zizzer is a winner. No. <laughs> no, that's not right. That's – for anybody that lives in town, that's what we call it. So. Okay. Um, but anyways, <laughs> so uh, let me give you a formal introduction. So um, Bill owns Duckett and Ladd and um, uh, him and his partner, and they have a CPA firm. Um, they specialize, now give me, tell me if I'm wrong, uh, in, well, well, handling, I want to say you guys do a lot of real estate stuff. Yes. Um, and is mainly the reason why I chose them is because, uh, because of that one fact, because listen, Every, there's CPs out there that do lots of different things. And I sometimes feel like you need to find one that specializes more so in your niche because the tax law is so big, right? I could be wrong, but I don't know. I find that if I tend to, to flock with the people that are doing kind of the same stuff, I get better results. And he is a full service uh, CPA firm that does everything. And they've got some, I mean, they got a cool video where he flips this penny dude and his partner catches it. It's really awesome. Yeah, one um, take. That's all it took on that, too. Yeah, just one take, yeah. But um, so with that said, let, that's my rough uh, version of what you do. Why don't you tell everybody who you are, what you do, and what your company's about? Yeah, you bet. Well, again, thanks, Corey. I, I do appreciate you having me on here, giving me an opportunity to kind of tell you a little bit. And hopefully I can help your, your listeners here. Um, you know, about, oh, gosh, back in 98 – I was coming out of Missouri State University and looking for something to do and, and got on with a big firm, a big accounting firm. Uh, and, you know, it was really funny because within probably two or three months, they assigned me to the biggest client. Now, this is a national firm. They assigned me to the biggest client the firm had in Springfield, Missouri, and is a real estate developer, a huge multifamily crew. And that was like three months in on the job, and I never – left that industry. I stayed in that all the way through the time period. I kind of rolled out there to another firm I worked with and, and, you know, with my partner, Jared, we ended up forming Duckett Ladd. And the cool thing is we actually still have that developer as a client at Duckett Ladd. They're still a fantastic client that has real estate in all, you know, in just a ton of states and they have a lot, a lot of good stuff going on. So, you know, I cut my teeth very early on in the multifamily space and, uh, really spent a lot of time on section 42 properties. I don't know if you know what that is or if any of your listeners do, but that's kind of the low income credit 
that's out there that incentivizes developers to build, you know, in, in depressed communities. And there's just a lot of regulation. There's a lot of rules. It's a very niche market, but you know, it's something that I'm very proud of that we've spent a lot of time in that space. We've developed an expertise that is nationwide and, and we do a lot of work there. So from that, it just was a very natural progression to kind of move into the other facets of real estate, you know, with the market rate like you do, uh, some, Tim and some of the other guys in, in the mastermind we're in, uh, as well as, as the single family, you know, the fix and flips and, and just your traditional real estate investing that we, we tend to see. So we made a decision, you know, not too long ago that, that we were really going to zero in on this market and, and try to own that space and, and add value to our people. And uh, it's been a really good move. Um, you know, the, the mastermind that we're in with you has certainly been a great move for us. And we've learned a lot from you guys and, and made contacts with people like yourself. So that's kind of the cliff notes to, to get to where I am now. Yeah, that's, a, that's crazy. Like, that's, uh, hey, so when you first got that <laughs> task with that position, <laughs> did your eyes just like go bug out? Like, oh my gosh, like, welcome to the show, right? Yeah, I mean. That was like a lot of pressure. Yeah, at that point, you work your way up. So I kind of was an entry level dude. I mean, I was doing the grunt work of accounting, and but I kind of learned, and, and what I realized is that these guys were brilliant. I mean, the way they looked at deal structure and the way they they looked at business was was on a upper another level. I mean, something I just didn't see, and I didn't I didn't comprehend at the time. But as I've kind of grown up in my career and watched other people. It's, it's really fun to watch because you do, you see certain people that just, they haven't figured out. I mean, they're, they're operating on a whole nother level than the rest of us. And those are the ones that it's like you say, I think if you copy, I think your thing is copy off of people, find those people who have that kind of mentality and spend as much time with you can, because, you know, we're very fortunate in our profession. We get to see a lot of what yeah. they do and have and they're privy to these conversations about, how they're choosing deals and, and, and where they're traveling to and what deals they're passing up. I mean, it's, it's really a fascinating deal. We're, we're very fortunate to have the opportunity to kind of get to know people that way because it certainly makes us better businessmen and makes us better when we're helping people like yourself. Yeah, exactly. So and we just, we're trying to show you the other side of that, which is called open market housing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and we've had a blast and you know, here's what's, so I want to talk about um, something that we just recently chatted about we actually had a couple conversations um we're talking about cost segregation studies mm -hmm. and how it applies to our next our new tax laws and um dude that's some there's some exciting changes that really i mean have a big um big impact especially yeah. with not only my investing but my investors that invest with me that invest with cash um that's going to be a huge deal for them. Yeah, yeah, potentially. And I mean, and I'll kind of back up and, and for your viewers, I'm assuming, or listeners, I'm assuming most of them probably have an idea what cost seg is, but but I'll kind of back up if you don't mind. And yeah, just, let's act like they don't because yeah, they may, act may like, not. like they don't know. So, you know, basically when you go out and let's say you buy a um, hundred unit apartment complex and let's say it's $8 million. In the past, what you might've done is say, okay, Let's just say that 800,000 is land and the rest is building. Okay, so land gets no depreciation, right? There's no tax write-off. There's no benefit to it. Building, residential gets 27 and a half years straight line. So you're taking that over almost 30 years. So that's a very slow payback period. And if you're going to hold it that long, that may be reasonable. But when you think about a building, there's so much other stuff in there that's not the building shell that's going to last 39 years. you got carpet you know, you got cabinetry, you got certain kinds of lighting and all these things that are not going to last 39 years. So it's not fair to the taxpayer to have to recapture those over, you know, 30 years, 27 and a half. So, you know, what's, what's developed over time is called cost segregation studies. And these are really cool tools that you know, there's firms that actually specialize in this. Yeah. And we have a lot of partnerships with these guys and what they do is they hire engineers and they look at site drawings and they go out and they look at, at schematics and, and, you know, blueprints and all that stuff. And they actually come in down to like wiring and, and lighting and all this cool stuff. And they break out and they say, you know what? That is not 27 and a half years. That's five year life. That's a seven year life. That's a 15 year life. 
And so all of a sudden, instead of saying 90% is going to a 27 and a half year life, now they're going to break out, say, 25 to say maybe even 30, 40 percent is in these shorter lived assets, which is which is by itself in a in a vacuum is awesome because then you're capping capturing those over five years, right? Yep. Well, now factor in tax reform, which has come in, and in the past, you know, there was always things out there called bonus. I'm sure your 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 listeners have experience that talk to CPAs where you would get some level of bonus depreciation, right? Uh, but it had to be on new property, right? You had to go out and build something or you had to go out and, and buy a new piece of equipment or whatever. Now they changed it. So use property qualifies as well. So all of a sudden, and, and, and it's a hundred percent. So all of a sudden, all of these, uh, you know, these, these things that you used to be able to break out separately and take over five years, now you get to take them in year one. And it's basically immediate expensing. And it is a, a huge deal. I think it's a boon for real estate investors. It's exciting. We're kind of factoring all of our tax planning under this model. And uh, it creates a tremendous opportunity for a lot of people who are listening to your program right now. Especially if you're a uh, real estate professional, Right. As which is described as a, you, it's a full-time job for you. That's yeah. how you make your living. You can take that depreciation. So I want to, we don't have this study exactly. We just had a preliminary study done on a property that um, is about a $10 million purchase. Right. And I think they're the cost seg guys um, are saying that we'll probably have almost a $3 million um, write off immediately. Mm hmm. Well, three million dollars is like stupid. <laughs> yeah. And now I can now because I have investors, half of it goes into my investors, half of it stays with me. But one point five million, I can offset not only against the income that I make, but all my other income as well. And that in itself, and then it carries forward if I don't use it all. And I think it carries forward indefinitely, if I'm, if I'm correct. So as long as, and, and here's the other thing, is like, that's only one building. If I keep buying multiple buildings in a year, like we're going to buy, probably buy five buildings this year, probably about $50 million worth of property this year. I don't think I'm going to have to pay taxes for a while. <laughs> Yeah, and, and keep in mind, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. And, and one of the conversations we had was the difference between being a real estate professional, which, which you are, and some of your invest or some of your listeners probably are as well, versus being a passive investor. You know, it's treated differently under, under tax law. So the ability for them to take those depreciation benefits may not be there to the extent of what they are for those who are actively going out and, and right. working, like you said, real estate. So the right. passive guys, though, just get to be offset their passive income, yes. right? That's right. And but they, even they, then, that's still a lot for them like they, because they can offset their income because well, a lot of them are making money off other things. If they have passive income, right, and that's something they'll want to get with their tax advisor. It certainly, um, you know, could help them. Again, you know, there's all kinds of that ways the IRS tries to trip you up with basis limitations and things like that. As long as, as the property's leverage, usually you're, you're okay on that front. Um, so, you know, it, it's really interesting now, now one thing that has come up that, that you and I really haven't talked about yet, but we'll need to look at is the tax reform also has kind of, um, limited the ability to take net operating losses, you know, so there may not be the hundred percent ability to, to offset tax there, but, you know, regardless, the, the ability to accelerate that up is something that, that is a tremendous benefit to the people in your profession that uh, uh, I don't even think we understand the, the, the depth of how much this is going to help, help you guys when it comes to generating cash flow by saving on taxes in that first year. Oh my gosh. I mean, cause, and if it carries forward, I mean, that really, um, all I'm like, my only goal is to buy as much property as I can, as it makes sense. Um, you know, we are we're still being very conservative in our process. So we feel like the market is, is very high and there is a correction on its way. And so we already are planning this. We, we buy for cash flow, um, and that's what we teach as well. Yep. But like um, this whole, the, but the whole conversation of even the cost, I mean, 
so I've only done I've done a, I've done a couple cost segs and but now it's a standard practice in every property that I own, mm-hmm. and um, and then th- maybe something new that we're going to have to look at. And this is uh, now this is when see having a good CPA, you start having conversations. In fact, after we got to do this podcast, me and you are going to have a a conversation on what Corey Peterson's plan. This is we're going to call it our quarterly meeting, right? And um, and really talk about planning of what I'm buying, what's my, you know, what am I doing, right? So you can be involved in it and give me advice, right? Tax advice. Right. And like good CPAs do this, by the way. Great CPAs make it mandatory. And I think you guys are great. Like you're like, Corey, we've got to get together. It's not like, hey, listen, I think we're going to get together. It's we got to get together. We got to, um, and I need you to be accountable to the time and do the work. And if I need something, I need it done. Um, you know, I think you hold people accountable. And by doing that, what we've experienced is so like um, the recapturing of 1031 exchanges. Yeah. So when we were talking about, it, I was like, Hey, I want to do a 1031 exchange. You're like, well, that may or may not be the right choice. So it all depends. And, but the numbers will tell you, that's what you told me. Right. Yeah, and I appreciate you you kind of saying that because I think that's a very important point that you know I like to say that the the you know t- tax cut and jobs act it I mean it's a mixed bag. There's good and there's bad. I think all in all it, it really helps small businesses. But one thing that's kind of buried in there that was really interesting is the ability to like kind exchange personal property is is no longer in there. Okay. So most people would experience that say if they had a truck and they wanted to trade it in and they could just reduce the base, like kind of exchange into a new, you know, work vehicle. Uh, that was a very traditional way you'd see it. But another way was when you were doing a 1031 exchange for a property, you basically would just 1031 the entirety of all the assets and, and, you know, move on down the road and more likely than not, you could defer that gain or at least part of it. So, what they've now come out and said is that personal property is no longer allowed to be 1031 exchange. So how that looks like is there could potentially be some phantom income. If you 1031 the entirety of the property, well, you know, the building, the land, those kind of things, that's fine. That's still in play, but all that personal property you broke out and took all the depreciation on, that is all of a sudden subject to gain. So, if you're looking at 1031 as your exit strategy, you really have to kind of run the numbers and see what's that going to cost you. And, and do you want to do maybe a partial 1031, pull some money out, pay your tax uh, and go on down the road because that is an unintended consequence of the tax reform is it it is limiting your ability to defer the entirety of the game. Right. But yeah, I, you know, and really that's what I love about it. It's like, Hey, it all depends on if the numbers work because we could buy, be buying an, another new property that we get to get blank amount of immediate depreciation or with the cost sector study that it could be the, a better play to do it that way versus to try to do a recapture or a partial 1031 exchange. Yeah, and, and part of it depends on, on what's, your, what's your, your holding strategy. I mean, if you're syndicating these deals, keep in mind a, a like kind of exchange, a partnership group really needs to stay the same. It needs to stay intact. Well, yep. that's going to be almost impossible to do with a syndicated group because some people want this and some people want that. You've got preferred returns you got to pay out. So, you know, in, in that kind of structure, you're probably going to be doing a straight sell paying tax anyway, moving on down the road. Whereas if you own it personally and, 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 you know, then you have the options of, of, of doing that 1031 and kind of running the numbers to see. So, or we get creative like Corey Peterson teaches and <laughs> you just do a quick loan and you cash out all your investors there. And then you can do an exchange without any partners. Yeah, that's a word we accountants absolutely hate. Corey is creative. We, we don't, we uh, shy away from that. Right. <laughs> but you know, what I love about, what I love about your firm is that um, a, a, you're not just a, um, a one man band here. Cause I've, I've, I've dealt with like at least four or five people now in your firm and they all do handle different parts. One's a payroll girl, Samantha and, and Paula's helping me with all my other stuff. And um, it's kind of nice. Like some people, they don't, under, they don't underestimate the value of, of your staff and your team. Like you've built systems, brother. 
you've got a pretty good accounting firm. I uh, appreciate that, Corey. That, that means a lot to hear that from you as a client. You know, we've, um, we made a decision about three years ago that we were going to be a different accounting firm. You know, we had just kind of gone through a, uh, a split with a group where we were part of a seven person firm and a very traditional accounting firm. And, and, you know, it just was one of those situations where we had seven partners and seven different visions about where we were going as a group. And uh, that's not good when you have partnerships. That's rule number one on one is communicate and make sure you're on the same page. Um, so when this came up, my partner, my current partner, Jared, another Popper Bluff guy, uh, and I sat down and we, don't we, hold that against him. <laughs> we had to look across the table at each other and say, are we going to do this differently? And, and, and we had to look at each other and see if we, we trusted that, that this is where we wanted to take you know, are the next steps of our lives. And, and, and I felt very confident that with his skill set, you know, matched up to mine, he's kind of an integrator type. If you follow traction, I'm a little bit more of the visionary. Yeah. Uh, I, we thought we could do some really great things. So from that day forward, we decided that, that the traditional model just wasn't going to work, you know, for a couple of reasons. Number one, we weren't passionate about it. Number two, it's kind of a dying beast. You know, when you look at disruption or industry, I mean, you got get you know Amazon and all these things. I mean, they're they're going to find a way to disrupt tax prep and all these things that are very tra transactional. You know, kind of that that routine uh, transactions. And so we just decided that we were going to create a firm that that kind of was a mission based firm built around trying to make people's lives better, and that starts with our team members, and that feeds right into our clients. And yeah. we take care of our people, like the Samanthas and the Paulas, that they're going to take care of the Corys. And I'm going to get feedback like, like you just gave us. So we feel like we're, we're there or we're starting to get there. It's, it's a long process, but you know, we are very proud of what we're building. Here. Right, I'm impressed, man. I mean, I, I've, I've had a couple of different CPAs working with me. Um, once we jumped on board with you, I, I knew when we made the move that it was going to be the best move of my life. Right. <laughs> you, um, you're married, right? Corey? I mean, come on, you can't. Well, besides getting married, can okay. Business and, decision. Yeah, business decision. So, like, listen, I, I'm going to make it add, – I'm going to admit to um, something that I'm not really good at, which is accounting, okay? I never have been. Now, on my properties and my apartments, I have my management companies that I hold accountable for the accounting, financial accounting of our properties and all that stuff. And they run pretty – very well. I mean, actually, probably the best in the business. Yeah, they do a great job. Um, but in my personal businesses, my fix and flip businesses, um, my um, other businesses, okay, I'm a train wreck, okay? I'm just going to be, honestly, I've, I'm the train wreck. And I, I always like, it's like, well, how much money do I got? I don't know. Let me look at my bank. Okay, we got a lot of money in there. So that's good, right? Yeah. Um, which is the, the worst way. And so this year, I made a financial commitment to myself that this would be the year that I would have no more headaches, that I would have clean and perfect books on every account, on every bank account, and your firm is helping me get there. And it's not been easy, no. <laughs> okay? No. Um, and we're still working through the process, but there's no doubt we are, we are well on our way. And I think so many investors are just like me. Yeah. That they start off and, you know, it's like, listen, I'm just trying to replace my income. I got to find a deal, find a deal, find a deal, make some money, make some money. And then, but then one day you wake up, you're like, dude, I'm kind of making some money. Um, but it, you don't even know where it's all going. Yeah. <laughs> and you need someone like you to kind of almost hit the pause button and be like, Oh, like you need to really think about your next steps and then, and like how to save money in taxes. Like, what are you doing now? Cause you're going to spend the money anyways, spend it smart. Right. Yeah. I, Set up things for your kids. Set up. Um, and we've not even started that part. Like we're just clean the books up first to step one. And then we're going to have our power, our power talk is like, okay, now let's talk about how to get out of the, out of the man's reach. Well, I think Corey, first of all, I wouldn't beat yourself up. I mean, most business owners hate accounting. And I don't blame them. If I wasn't account, I'd hate it too. I mean, it's, it gets in the way, right? It's a distraction from what you should be doing. So 
you know, we, we at Duck and Lab, we believe in outsourcing weaknesses. You know, yeah. we're, we're, we're not good at, at, at doing IT. You know what, my partner, Jared Duck, he could probably fix computers and install updates, but guess what? We hire somebody to do that because that's a waste of our time. And that's not the highest and best use of our time. Well, guess what? The highest and best use of your time is not monkeying around books. You're not good at it. You don't, you don't love it. It's, it's not, it's something that's a hassle. It's a chore. It's not really uh, being done timely or properly. So why mess with it? So that, that's, that's what we found is that most people are that way and they should be. I mean, you focus on the things that are going to make you money. Now, what's interesting, and, and, and you'll agree with this, what we found is as we've kind of gotten into the, uh, the real estate space, uh, you guys are shiny object guys. I mean, it's, it's the next deal. It's, it's going, it's finding what's going on. And, and man, that's, that's part of our job is to try to try to like zero you in and focus you and say, guys, you know, this seems to be a waste of your time. This is a distraction, but this over here, let's take a look at this. This seems to be really rolling. You're, you're, Sometimes people don't even know where they're making money yeah, or where they're losing money. Well, and that's just it. When you have different streams of income coming in, it's really easy for a great performer to hide the dogs. And so you're spending all your time doing these things. It's the 80, 20 rule. I mean, you're spending all your time doing these things that aren't making you any money. Well, guess what? That's, that's bandwidth. That's capacity that's gone. Yep. You're not, you're not able to get that back. Time is the most precious commodity. I mean, that's, that's how we sell our services is let us give you free time to go out and do stuff you're passionate about and you're good at. And, and so you're spending all your time doing these things that could be absolute drains of time and money. And you don't even know it because you're looking at a cash account. I mean, it happens all across the nation. I mean, this yeah. is, this is the story we hear day after day after day when we're talking to people and, and what we're trying to tell people is all respect. That's not good enough. You, you're better than that. You know? Yeah. And I'll tell you this, here's the other thing is you should start sooner than later. Like I mm -hmm. wish I would have had this conversation and the commitment in myself because every company still needs a financial component, right? There's sales, yeah. marketing, and finance, right? And I call it finance yeah. almost like bookkeeping and like all that stuff, right? And most people are really good at the first two, sales and marketing. Yeah. And they, the last thing they do, they bolt on, is the finance. And I wish, I wish, if I could go back in time and have a crystal ball, I would have like been, like when I first started, I would have made this a priority from the get-go because I really truly believe it would have saved me, like what you just said, a lot of, um, you know, white sunshiny objects that I was chasing. Yeah. That I probably should have ran from. Yeah. I mean, I heard a guy say one time that accounting is the language of business. And I agree with that. It is so important and it is so underutilized. I mean, when you have good data, it can tell you so much. Then you know your numbers, right? Well, you know your numbers, you know your ratios. And we're big believers in scoreboards and, and you know, putting stuff in front of you to say, are you winning financially? Because, you know, we can talk all day long about top line growth, my revenue. I was talking to a lady today at lunch. I mean, her top line growth, she's grown, grown. Then you say, well, are you making any more money? No. Okay. There's a breakdown there. You see, so yep. have this information proactively in front of you and you're having conversations with people who are fluent in it. It can make all the difference in the world. Some of our best relationships are just what you said. People who start out maybe from a corporate world, they come into a, um, a business that they bought or, or that they're starting up and they understand the value of that. And it started from a ground floor up. You know, it can really lead to a stable foundation to really build off of. Yeah, dude, I, I, tr I, tr I totally believe that. I totally believe in the, the process. Um, so listen, if uh, we're going to, I got, <laughs> I've got to run short today because I know we got to have a meeting and I don't want to, I don't want to keep this podcast too terribly long because we are talking about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> CPA, if we go 30 minutes, we're good, right? Yeah. 30 minutes. Uh, this is not the long version, <laughs> but um, listen, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they, how do they find you? Yeah, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to do that. Um, the first things, you know, what probably what most people would do anyway is to, to go out and check us online. Um, you know, www.ducketdu.com. -E uh, they can learn about us there. They can kind of figure out, you know, what we believe and uh, see if it feels like it's a fit uh, to, 
to move forward in discussions. They can look at it, find us on Facebook, on Instagram. You know, we try to have a good presence there. We try to put forth content that's meaningful. Um, you know, certainly uh, feel free. They can always call me, you know, in, in our office at 417-883-6590. Uh, but again, you know, Corey, what I'll say is, is, is when I, when it comes to finding a professional partner, like attorney or accountant, it's all about, you know, the fit, you know, is it, is, is the fit feel right? Do you guys believe the same things? And if you do, you can usually do some great stuff together. And, and as you're talking to your CPA or looking at anyone, try to figure out, do they believe what I believe? And are they going to help me partner with me to take me where I want to go? And if, uh, if you can find that, it doesn't matter if it's us or somebody else, it's going to really help you out. Dude, that is the truth. Every time I've had a CPA, it was always as if I was just another number client, right? And only with your firm, and I'm, I mean this sincerely, only with your firm have, it, it's been totally different, right? Where I, I mean, I look at you and Marcus and Jared and, and, and your whole team um, as friends and that, that understand my business um, and that are going to really, that really care about yeah. what's going on with, with Corey and, and, and business. And dude, by, there's no amount of like money that would ever, that can make me change where I'm going now. Like I, I believe in our, what you guys are doing so well. I mean, I, I love the process. I love how we've got to know each other. Um, I feel like we've slow played it. Like yeah. we dance a little bit and we yeah. recorded and, um, but it makes the relationship so much more viable and, and important and, um, and that we are, um, Hey, if you can do business with friends and people, you know, like, and trust you've hit Nirvana, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's one of our beliefs is that, you know, we believe people do need more than an account they need a partner. And we try to look at every relationship that way. And, you know, we, we honestly believe Corey that with a good, solid foundation of accounting and, and information and a good solid relationship with accountant, you will be more successful. And, and again, there are a lot of good ones out there. It's just finding that right one. that believes There's a lot more bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no comment. You know, there's, there's good and bad and everything, right? <laughs> you're so, you're so awesome, dude. Hey, so listen, man, for, for my 40th edition podcast, Yep. Talking about taxes and cost segregation. We've actually had a pretty damn good conversation, brother. If we're, if we're talking to a CPA, I, I guess we could have done worse, right? I mean, I feel like this is a win, win, win all the way around. <laughs> Let's see how your viewers feel. Yep. Hey, so uh, I'm going to talk to my audience real quick. Guys, uh, really seriously, if you are lo looking for a CPA firm um, that does accounting, that can take care of the whole process. If you're, if you're not going and checking out their website, I'm just going to tell you right now, you're stupid. I don't say that very often, but like that's how much I believe in, in this process and their firm. Uh, they are different. And see, when you have industry changers that changes like paradigms and say, you know, what's, what's out there and then let's do it differently. A lot of times those are, the, those are leaders, those are innovators. And I truly believe your firm is in innovation mode because you're giving a service that is so much needed because the way it was done in the old ways is not what's needed now. People and businesses need financial help more than ever and financial guidance more than ever, right? And so uh, Duck and Lad is a, is a great place to get it. Um, and as always, uh, I didn't give you any plugs in the beginning or maybe I did, I can't remember. Um, if you've not done it, go to the Kahuna Wealth Builders and download my Quick Start Workshop uh, video series. Okay, it's the easiest way to like learn about how to buy apartments, how to raise private money, how to get deal flow, all those things that you need. Um, and then, uh, secondly, once you've figured out that process and you're ready to like move to the next step, you've got to get my Kahuna Cash Flow Calculator. Now, why is that important? Because that's the underwriting tool that is going to show you if a deal is a deal or if a deal is not a deal. And so it's like deal, no deal. And you're going to have to know that it's only 197 bucks. It's a cheap investment. Uh, you get a whole training series and all the stuff you need to make it to, to, to really get you in the know. And that's important. And as always, as I say in every podcast, when I get to the end, listen, this game of real estate, it's, 
it's my passion. It's my love. Um, Jer or, uh, Bill is, is, is in it on the other side of accounting, but real estate is his passion love because that's all he deals with is, is mainly real estate clients. And listen, there's no anything, anything else that I've found that it can build wealth faster than real estate and especially the multifamily part. It's time and money. But in order to do it, you've got to start to believe. And honestly, your mind, what's in your mind is the most powerful thing that you possess. And so I'm going to challenge you right now to start telling yourself that you can, that you can and you will, that you have the power that you possess all the information. If you don't, go to my website and find it. Like there's so much out there in today's world. You've got to start feeding your mind and feeding it daily that you can be successful in real estate because I believe if you do that, that your paradise is possible.